Hi everyone, so this is going to be the last uh, video on motion graphs and in particular the last thing that we're going to talk about with linear motion. Um, so this is pertains to two aspects. First, uh, a lot of people end up having trouble remembering which graph uh, does what. You know, when you have a velocity graph, what do you get when you take the slope of it? What do you get when you take the area? How do you remember that? Well, one thing that you can do to remember is, again, um, flashcards. If, if it comes down to memorization, flashcards are always the best way. Though again, I usually like to go around that. I try and find uh, something else to help remember it. Uh, anyone who goes into calculus may end up uh, knowing how to remember this because it's actually one of the things that you learn is how to go from velocity equations to acceleration equations. Yeah, uh, you wouldn't believe it, but calculus is going to be heavily related to a lot of physics stuff. A lot of the this stuff you do in there is going to be kind of tied with what we do as well. Uh, but uh, in addition to that, the other reason uh, that we're going to talk about today is something related to the more general concepts of motion graphs. Basically, where instead of having concrete numbers of what is the actual slope, a lot of times what they'll say is like, oh, well, in, in general, what would this equation look like? What would the graph for uh, acceleration look like if the velocity looked like this? So what I usually tell people is if you're having trouble remembering or if you want to kind of get a, a quick way of answering some of these questions, uh, what you can do is remember these two things, the orders of the motions. Uh, so for the order of the motions, uh, it goes displacement, velocity, acceleration. This is the order that we learned it in. We learned displacement first, then velocity, then acceleration. Uh, this is also order of complexity. This is you know where you're where you're located, how fast you move, how fast you increase your speed. You can also remember this because of units. This is meters, meters per second, meters per second squared. If we had something beyond acceleration, which I actually did mention was the jerk, I bet you could probably guess what the unit's going to be. It's going to be meters per second cubed, and so on and so on. So the the units will also kind of hint at the order of these motions. Uh, the second thing that you have to remember is what I call the order of the graphs. So these are the two things you need to know, the order of the motions and then the order of the graphs. Uh, usually with the order of the motions, I, I simplify it to dVA, as you'll see in a second. Uh, now the order of the graphs is similar to this, uh, but instead of being increasing complexity, it's actually you know, starting from complex to basic graphs. So we have curved graphs, linear graphs, constant graphs, and zero. Curved graphs are basically any exponential graph. So this is a curved graph, uh, this is a curved graph, um, this is a curved graph. So all of these are curved graphs. Uh, linear graphs, as the name implies, are straight lines. So that's a graph. That's a linear graph. That's a linear graph. If we had it in the negative side, that also works. Uh, constant graphs. Again, what we're referring to is the value being constant. So this is really the only constant graph that I'm referring to. And then the zero graph is just this. There's nothing. Sometimes uh, they, they'll usually uh, differentiate a constant graph from a zero graph by saying a constant non-zero graph. Because technically, a graph that remains at zero at all times is constant. It's constantly zero. Uh, but the constant that I'm referring to here is being some value, either positive or negative. So again, this is curve, linear, constant, zero. So the way this works, so what you do is you either write out curve, linear, constant, zero. You can write out uh, CL, CZ, something like that, anything to kind of remember curve, linear, constant, zero. You can even draw out the graphs. And what you do is you figure out whatever information they tell you, because they're going to tell you at least one of the graphs. So let's say they'd say um, that the velocity graph is constant. So this is what I'm going to do. Using this information, 
I'm going to put in my curvilinear constant zero, uh, in this case I have the drawn out graphs, I'm going to put velocity over the constant graph. Now, if you remember, the order of the graphs, or the order of the motions, is dVA. So that means to the left of V, the graph to the left of it, is going to be my displacement graph, and the graph to the right of V is going to be acceleration. So if my velocity is constant, then I know my displacement is going to be linear and my acceleration is going to be zero. Now let's say they tell us something else. Let's say they say uh, that the velocity is increasing. And then they also say that it's uh, linear. So it's increasing linear. So once again, I write out my graphs, curve linear constant zero. My velocity is linear. To the left of V is D. So to the left is going to be the displacement. And to the right is the acceleration. We could do that for all of these. Um, now you wouldn't actually ever do a graph on this, but let's say they said that the velocity was zero. Uh, that's going to be hard to read, but velocity is zero. So velocity is here. To the left is my displacement. To the There is no graph to the right, so it just is going to pile on here. And that's pretty much it. Technically, there actually are other graphs to the uh, to the left of curve, but you would never see them in this class. This is actually the highest curve that you'll see, which is uh, a you know, typical uh, quadratic. Um, now there's a few things to note. First, because of the way that this is set up, you will never ever have two graphs that are representing the same motion look the same. So if your velocity is linear, your displacement cannot also be linear, and your acceleration also cannot be linear. So the linear graph, if one of those measurements, d, v, or a, is linear, then no other graph can be linear. It ends up being uh, almost an exclusivity thing. So the one time, once one graph is taken by one of these measurements, no other graph for that motion can take that. Um, another thing that I want to point out with this is that this isn't 100%. Again, this is just meant to kind of help you kind of remember uh, some of these uh, relations, like how the graph should look. Uh, but it doesn't work all the time. Uh, mainly, it just kind of shows you that, you know, if you had a, a linear velocity, your displacement is going to be curved. But it doesn't necessarily tell you whether it's curved this way or curved this way, or this way, or yada yada yada. There's a bunch of different ways that it could be curved. So it doesn't actually tell you how it's curved, just that it is. Uh, in order to kind of uh, answer those questions, you have to go back to what you remember about these, about the whole, the slope of this graph gives you the next graph. So the slope of displacement gives you velocity. The slope of velocity gives you acceleration. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a second. Uh, now another thing that I want to actually point out that's going to make your life easy, uh, if we go back to this, you may notice that I pretty much only did this case and this case. Um, that's because of the fact that in this class your acceleration is either going to be zero or constant. And that's it. You'll never have a case where velocity is curved you'll never have a case where acceleration is linear. So it kind of makes your life easy knowing that only a curved graph can go with displacement. That no other graph can be curved. Uh, and, same, and similar thing with the uh, linear graph, it can only go with distance and velocity. It can never go with acceleration. Because in this class, acceleration will always be constant or zero. All right? So I just wanted to mention that. Now we'll do some practice questions, so pause the video work itself, we'll go over this in a second. Alright, so let's uh, go through the whole curve linear constant zero. So curve linear constant uh, zero. So if you're just wondering, this is how I uh, write my constant symbol. So again, 
the order of the graphs is DVA. My displacement is curved. So displacement goes over the curve. To the right of this is going to be V. To the right of that is A. DVA. All right. So this tells me the shape of my velocity graph and the shape of my acceleration. Now let's go through the choices and see which ones don't make sense. Uh, well, right off the bat, constant momentum. We haven't learned about momentum, so let's just get rid of that because clearly that is not something that I would ask you about. Now let's go to B, a decreasing acceleration. Well, according to this, acceleration should be constant. So that's also wrong because acceleration shouldn't be decreasing based off of this graph. It should be constant. Uh, decreasing mass, maybe. Uh, we don't really know. It doesn't mention anything about mass, so let's just leave it on the back burner. Now D says an increasing speed. Well, here it says velocity is linear, so it could be linear up or linear down. Let's look at this graph. The graph starts off flat and slowly becomes steeper and steeper and steeper. The slope gives me velocity. So if the slope is increasing, then the velocity is increasing. So yes, this makes sense. It is an increasing speed. All right. So like I said, uh, this is one of those cases where this will help kind of uh, get rid of some of your choices, but it may not necessarily point to a question being correct, just a choice being possible. And then you'll have to go back to what you know in order to figure out which one's the actual correct answer. So here's the next question. Pause the video, work on the cell phone, we'll go over in a second. All right, so uh, from here, once again, uh, I want to try and get rid of some of the choices because you know what? When you have four choices, if you don't know what you're doing, it can get a little bit um, frustrating and, and almost uh, anxiety filled to have to work with four questions that all seem a little complicated. So let's try and get rid of uh, little by little one of these at a time. So remember one of the things I said was that two graphs can never be the same. Two graphs can't be curved, two graphs can't be linear, and two graphs can't be constant. Well it just so happens we do have two graphs that are linear. So this is automatically wrong. So. I can erase this, cross this out, and now I have three graphs to choose from. Our lives are now a little bit simpler. Uh, let's look at this one. This one seems a little bit complicated. So I'm going to remember curve linear constant zero. And then going through here, my displacement's curved. So I'm going to put D over the curve. To the right of this is the velocity, and to the right of this is acceleration. So according to this, my velocity should be linear, but when I look at this, it's constant. That doesn't make sense. So now because of this, I know that this is wrong. So now I'm down to these two choices. If at this point, uh, if you want to guess, you at least have a 50-50 shot. But let's try and actually get the answer. So uh, going back to here, so I already did the DVA for here. Uh, the displacement's curved, so the velocity should be linear. So this is possible. I'm going to put a little question mark because maybe that's a choice. All right, now I'm going to have to redo the curve linear constant zero for this one. And I'm going to put uh, the linear, uh, the displacement's linear, so D goes over the L. Velocity should be constant, and acceleration is zero. Uh-oh velocity is constant, this is also constant. So now both of these are possible. So again, as I said before, this won't immediately disregard every choice. Anything that satisfies this could be an answer. It uh, doesn't mean it has to be one. So now let's look at um, this graph. So this graph is a linear graph with a positive slope. This velocity graph, this is the zero line, this is a negative number. Well, we've said before that a displacement graph, the slope of the displacement graph, gives us velocity. So if this has a positive slope, that means our velocity should also be positive. But because this is negative, that tells me that this is wrong. 
So that's what you end up doing. You can use this to whittle down your choices. Sometimes if you're lucky, you might actually be able to get rid of all the wrong choices and be left with the only one that's correct. If not, you'll be left with a 50-50 shot, in which case you'll have to go back to the basics of, well, technically, the slope of displacement gives us velocity and see which one makes sense. Uh, I could do the same thing here, and it's the same reasoning from the previous question. It starts off flat and increases in steepness. So the slope increases, the velocity increases. Boom. So this is my answer, question one. Or sorry, choice one. All right, here's the next question. Question 10. Pause the video, work itself, and we'll go over in a second. All right. Now, I had mentioned before that when you have a motion graph, first, you want to try to avoid using equations. Uh, there are a few times, very few times, where you could be allowed to use an equation. But for the most part, uh, if you use an equation, you run a very, very high risk of getting the question wrong. Uh, so what I usually tell people is you do one of three things. You read the graph, you slope the graph, or you take the area of the graph. All right, so let's see what we get. Read, slope, or area. Well, they're asking me about displacement. My graph says displacement. That checks out, so it looks like I'm reading it. Easy peasy. So let's see, uh, what is the displacement after eight seconds? So at eight seconds, it's zero. That's it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right. Uh, here's the next question. Pause the video, work on itself, and we'll go over in a second. All right. So I said before that there are a few times where you can get away with using an equation. This is one of the very few times when they say average speed. Now I did actually say this before that uh, if they say the phrase average speed then you are allowed to use this one equation. So the equation you're going to use is v bar equals d over t. So uh, we know the total distance traveled so here it ends up being uh, 2 meters and the time ends up being four seconds. So that means our average speed is 0.5 meters per second. Um, now you have to be careful with this. Uh, first, because we're talking about average speed, this has to be specifically distance. Uh, now for the four seconds, this actually didn't matter. Uh, but if we went for the full five seconds, then uh, the distance wouldn't be 1. Uh, in this case, actually, the distance would be 3 because you walked 2 meters, you didn't move, and then you walked another meter. Remember, distance can never actually go down. Your displacement goes down, but your distance will always go up. Uh, so any line that goes down, you actually have to add that in uh, when you're talking about distance. Now, going back, uh, you actually could have found this using slope. Uh, the way you would have done that is you would have taken the slope of this line. So this goes up 2 over 2. So this has a slope of 1. This starts at 2 and ends at 2. So this has a slope of 0. Uh, you could have averaged this. 1 plus 0 over 2 equals 0.5. Uh, but again, this also has its issues because um, you have to make sure that these lines are equally uh, horizontal. So two seconds, two seconds, it works. If this went, um, if this looked more like this, went up for two seconds, but then was flat for eight seconds, let's say, then uh, you wouldn't be allowed to do this. So you would end up getting the wrong answer. So um, usually for this, again, if they say the phrase average speed, you are immediately allowed to use this equation. Uh, but for the most part, it's almost like a uh, if or thing, or uh, you, uh, if and only if. So if you're going to be using this equation, it has to also say average speed. Again, there's very few times that you're going to be uh, 
able to use this equation and actually get the right answer. A lot of that will actually come down to uh, practice and experience. The more questions you do, the more you'll be exposed to these and be able to uh, recognize how the questions are worded when you're allowed to use v bar equals c over t and when you should be using some other equation. All right, so this is a question. If you want, you can do it. Um, I'm going to leave that up to you. Uh, but basically, it's drawing a motion graph for a cheetah and for a hare. So I'll actually post uh, a solution to this later on so you can actually check it out. But it is uh, good to be able to draw out a motion graph. But unfortunately, I won't be able to actually do it on here. Uh, and that's basically it. Um, I actually want to mention one last thing before I go. So uh, I want to go over one more time why the slope of displacement gives you velocity and why velocity gives you acceleration. So let's see. So displacement and time. So displacement is measured in meters and time is measured in seconds. So if we have a line, taking the slope, we have to find two points and take the difference of them. So the uh, equation for slope is the change in the y over change in the x. So if I'm looking at the y direction, displacement is measured in meters and that's going to be on the y. So I'm going to have meters up top, and in the denominator, I'm going to end up having seconds. So meters divided by seconds, that is a speed. So you can use this. You can use the units to kind of figure out what it is. So this is another way that you can remember. Uh, you could also use it by uh, doing this, saying, well, on the y-axis is distance on the x-axis is time and the only equation that looks like this is the average speed equation so the slope will give you speed uh, this also works for the velocity graph velocity and time you have a line you take two points taking the slope is once again change in y over change in x the y-axis is velocity the x-axis is time I'm going to actually leave the delta in there because right when I write this, I can immediately see this is the acceleration. So you can always do this little trick to kind of remember what you get when you take the slope of one of these motion graphs. So if you get an equation that we have, there you go, easy peasy. Uh, and then you could just remember that uh, taking the area would be the opposite one. So taking the area, this would actually give us distance because the slope gives us acceleration. All right? uh, and, and that's basically it. So that's it for the linear motion topic. We'll do some practice stuff and then eventually we'll end up having our first uh, quiz on most of the stuff. Uh, I'll talk more about that as we get closer. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, have a great day and good luck.